What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American here today to react and learn about weird things that only exist in Canada? Talk about the perfect, like, clickbait title. As soon as I saw this title, Weird Stuff You Can Only Find in Canada, I was like, I have to watch this. I have no choice but to watch this. I'm not going the rest of my life without knowing all the weird stuff you Canadians are doing. What are you doing over there? That, that's, so, that's so weird. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, I was trying to think. Whoa, what's weird stuff that we do in the United States? What only exists in the United States that's weird? Well, I bet a ton of stuff that I don't know of because I'm living in it, but I don't know, like, the not using the metric system, like our weird imperial units of measurement. That's kind of weird, <laughs> but I am uh, more than excited to learn about a list of weird things that are only in Canada. How can stuff only be in Canada? Does that mean it's it's either really horrific, <laughs> like horrible, terrible stuff that the rest of the world just doesn't want? <laughs> is, is that what we're talking about? Or is it just so unique and uh, the rest of the world can't figure out how to recreate it? It's so uniquely Canadian. Maybe that's a better way of looking at it. Anyway, I've uh, rambled on enough. Uh, the uh, <laughs> The curiosity is at its peak level. Let's take a look. I am extremely Canadian. I was born and raised in Southern Alberta. It sounds like a hockey player on a tractor. Southern Alberta. You know? And I've lived on the West Coast and the East Coast. And I'm multicultural, which is like, you know, melting pot. Canada. I'm as Canadian okay. as it gets. And I want to know if these stereotypes pertain to me and if they're true. And if they are, I'll definitely let you know about that. This is an intense moment in Toronto. The tensions between the protesters and the cops, very, very intense. <laughs> <laughs> I love how he- <laughs> Oh, okay. So this girl is extremely Canadian, but honestly, I don't know why, but she acts super American. Maybe that's just further proof that Canadians and Americans are super similar, because I would never have been able to tell just by the way she speaks and her humor uh, that she's not American. But anyway, interesting anecdote. He poked holes in his water bottle. He's using the only weapon that he should be using, his water bottle, and he's getting sprayed in the face. I love Canada, I really do. Wait, are you trying to tell me right now that you guys didn't have Dunkaroos? There's no way you guys didn't have Dunkaroos. That's impossible. I'm like scared. Are Dunkaroos a Canadian thing? I'm scared. If they're a Canadian thing, I don't know what to tell you. Dunkaroos. I swear that we have Dunkaroos. But then again, there's a lot of different brand names for those little snacks you get as kids where you dunk the thing into a thing. Uh, Dunkaroos does sound familiar though. Anyway, anyway. Ew, like that's just really sad. Maybe just cinnamon gram is a Canadian thing, but I really genuinely hope that you guys aren't growing up and not eating Dunkaroos. I think she's actually correct. I think the flavor <laughs> is what's Canadian because I'm almost positive we have Dunkaroos. Huh. That seems like a thing Americans would just chow down on. As for Ruffles poutine, never seen it. Ketchup chips are a thing here and we do like them. This is going by quick. Hold on. Uh, poutine. Dunkaroos. As for Ruffles. Ruffles poutine, yeah, de <laughs> we definitely don't have poutine, and we definitely don't have Ruffles poutine. And don't even get me started about the ketchup chips. Ruffles poutine, never seen it. Ketchup chips are a thing here, and we do like them here. I hate them, but a lot of people like them. Terry, do you like ketchup chips? Huh. Terry loves ketchup chips. They don't actually taste like ketchup, they just kind of do, in a good way. Okay, like, that's a funny way to put it, because a lot of Americans are exactly like that, where we like, I don't know, like strawberry flavored whatever, uh, Jolly Rancher. But we like it because it's like the fake strawberry <laughs> flavor. <laughs> it doesn't really taste like a strawberry, but we kind of like the fake artificial strawberry flavor. It kind of grows on you. Kind of like uh, ketchup chips. Like they're not horrible. And I think that if they were in most countries, you would like them. Bags of milk, very common in Ontario, but it wasn't common where I grew up. If you ask people here why bagged milk is a thing, they get offended and they're like- <laughs> They get offended. <laughs> There's no way. Uh, but why? Why bagged milk? I still don't know if I understand. Is it a recycling thing? Uh, plastic rather than paper, but- Okay, I could I could sit here all day trying to rationalize bagged milk. 
whatever, you can have it. What do you mean? That's like how it should be. <laughs> and they get kind of <laughs> defensive about it. So beaver tails, I don't know what these are, but like I hear about them a lot because I live here. There's not much of an appeal to me. I prefer crepes, yeah. You like them? No, they look gross. They look- <laughs> I, uh, I saw somewhere along the line uh, looking at Canadian things on the internet, beaver tails. This exact photo, actually, <laughs> come to think of it. And they actually look really, really good. I think Americans would love these, but they are definitely a Canadian thing. They look like too much. Like that's a lot of Nutella. It looks like too much. That's, exact, that's exactly why the Americans would love it because it is definitely too much, but that's perfect. I just can't, it's too much for me. I'm a simple woman, okay? Every time I have a package that I'm sending to somebody who's not a native to Canada, I send them one of these, a coffee crisp. And if you've never had one before, I'm so genuinely- Coffee crisp? Is it coffee flavored? What's the appeal here? It looks like any old candy bar. Coffee crisp has a nice name too. Hmm, looks nice. Never heard of it. Sorry, because this is the best chocolate bar of all time. Although it, it's like mm. up there with Twix, but I would say it's better. And it tastes like coffee and it's good. And it's oh. like a nice light, like, <sighs> oh, I wish I had one right now. Canada is a country okay. of weather contrasts. This is true to an extent. It'll rain and then snow and then be sunny and warm in the same day. But that's like more the exception and not the rule. They obviously either like shoveled the, actually they didn't, this is like fresh snow here. So what probably <laughs> happened is like the sun melted the snow here. But but it's yeah. probably still really cold outside. Like this guy's just doing this for the picture. I mean, in the United States, we have individual states that like to have like a thing kind of similar to this where uh, in certain states, they're like, the weather here is so random. Or in other states, it's like, oh, it's always hot or it's always cold. And then there's some that are like Canada where it's like, you never know what's gonna happen day to day. So that's almost kind of similar. Here's another piece of proof. We are living in three seasons at once right now. There's like the trees with the grass, like the green grass over here. This kind of looks like a transition between fall and winter. I don't see summer or spring. I see spring here. Oh, <gasps> I don't know what to do. <gasps> yeah, I mean, sure, I'll give you that. Can yeah, again, most Americans do assume that Canada is a frozen winter wasteland, but uh, <laughs> I know better. I know better now. Canada's Prime Minister Justin Trudeau doesn't feel shy about showing his outstanding socks. Yeah, we have a hot oh. Prime Minister. So what? He wears cool socks. So what? He's a nice guy. Look at those okay. socks. Oh, wow. Uh, the whole internet was like crapping their pants about it. They were like, oh, Star Wars socks. How cool. <laughs> but they bother me because they don't match. I'm actually surprised more American politicians don't do that. I really am surprised. Maybe some of the younger, the new generation of American politicians will get with it and start wearing like Star Wars socks. That would actually make people like them. That's not even a joke. I need to tell someone about this. Like a, like, like a politician needs to pay me for this information about what Canadian politicians are doing to rise in the polls, wear cool socks. It's a good idea, I like it. But whatever, we love these Canadian socks right here. Is there anything more important than going to classes? Hockey is, this is yeah. true, this is true, yeah, true. Guilty. Hey, this is one of the stereotypes about Canada that as far as I can tell, turn, it seems to me from all I've heard, from everything I've heard, the limited stuff I've heard, uh, to be fair, uh, it's kind of true. It's kind of true. Guilty as charged. And actually my high school that I went to, like there were a lot of like hockey players who went pro. My school was like a farm school for them. And it was pretty fun for me. <laughs> is that just like <laughs> me saying I'm a slut? <laughs> Canada <laughs> is not just about the maple syrup. We also have maple water. This is actually true. And if you've never tried maple water, it is delicious and you should have it. Apple juice is fun. Orange juice is fun. Water with like a slight taste of maple sap. Is I don't I feel like Canadians are actually so used to maple syrup that they have lost the ability to, or maybe I'm the one with the problem, but they have lost the ability to realize how strange it is to have maple syrup flavored stuff, especially water. Water may have been the last thing I ever expected to be maple syrup flavored. That literally sounds like a joke that an American would make. That sounds like a joke. That an American would say, oh, they probably have maple syrup flavored water. <laughs> and then <laughs> it's true. No, it's true. Uh, I'd be really interested to try it, to be perfectly honest. Uh, I'd want to try a lot of this stuff. 
is delicious, and I highly recommend you try it. Isn't it good? I haven't tried it, I just have it at home. Maple water is so Canadian that my friend here has it in her fridge, but hasn't tried it yet. You gotta have it just in case. Ba that surprises me. I would have thought that was like a novelty or something. Like, it's like saying we have ranch flavored water in the United States. We're pretty sick, but we're not that sick, you know? <laughs> it can catch up. Hmm. Where the country meets the mountains, I would say that I've never tried that. Sounds gross, but I'd try it. It's got that like hot moose on it. I can never okay. say no to a hot moose. <laughs> in Canada, there are okay. clocks where the time is represented by birds. In this case, it's almost song sparrow or clock. I've never seen this in my entire life. I've actually seen a clock like this before. Maybe it's just a bird fan thing. Not really a Canadian or American thing. I've just seen, I, I swear I've seen this clock. This is like some kind of nerd stuff that I've never heard of. We don't do nerd yeah. stuff where I'm from. We drink <laughs> beer in a ditch and pretend it's camping where I'm from. Warning, invincible moose. He will crack your tractor in half. <laughs> moose, I wanted to call them meese. <laughs> Mooses are big, mooses are strong. Mooses are very Canadian. Big, strong Canadians. I bet he would apologize after. And I don't like how people make fun of Canada for like always apologizing, because like it's rude to not apologize. If you bump into someone, you don't say, oh, excuse me. You say, oh, sorry, like, right? If you don't say sorry, then I think that's very rude. Please do not. Okay, yep, now. The, uh, the Canadians are defending their over-apologies. That's fine. I would much rather live in a civilization that is overly apologetic than the other way around. So I actually don't mind that at all. I had to rewind this because uh, you can't just gloss over this moose um, sign. Because although this might be a common occurrence in Canada, maybe. Do you have rabid mooses taking down tractors everywhere? I don't know. Maybe. You have a sign dedicated to it. Maybe you do. I don't know. <laughs> but this sign is kind of badass from an American who's never seen a moose danger. It's going to flip over your car sign. This is weird to me. Uh, so I just felt like I had to point that out. <laughs> Say, oh, excuse tampons, pads, say, oh, sorry, like, right? If you don't say sorry, then I think that's very rude. Please do not flush yeah. tampons, pads, diapers, poultry, old love letters, promises, ashes of unloved ones, babies, alligators, baby alligators, dead goldfish, hopes and dreams. Hmm? Thank you. We had this sign at my high school so that we wouldn't flush our hopes and dreams. Canadian dear- I don't get it. Wait, what does this mean? Are Canadians- Is this uh, Canadian humor? Or are Canadians very worried about- clogging their toilets. I am not sure I understand the reference here, but it is a funny sign. Maybe I'm overanalyzing it. Maybe it's just a funny sign. Okay, I can accept that. Thank you. We had this sign at my high school so that we wouldn't flush our hopes and dreams. Canadian deer using crosswalks when crossing the road. I think that that's just <laughs> an accident. <laughs> Vandalism in Canada comes with a tinge of proper etiquette. Sorry about your wall. You should apologize <laughs> about the wall. Although, is this like really Canada? Do we know this? Has there been like some research done to verify this? I yeah, there's some stuff here that's clearly, clearly like memes and coincidence, like the polite deer. Uh, following the traffic sign <laughs> or uh, road marking and the polite vandalism. But uh, a lot of this stuff, other stuff is actually like obviously true, which is fascinating to me. <laughs> oh, is this like really Canada? Do we know this? Has there been like some research done to verify this? I believe it, but like, I'm trying to be skeptical because all of these so far have been like pretty accurate. They're even sorry about yeah. selling limited editions. Sorry, only for a limited time. <laughs> 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 That makes sense. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Why is- <laughs> uh, She keeps defending it too, that's funny. Uh, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, it's just like uh, the truth that Canadians are very apologetic and sorry, it's fine, it's nice. It's nice, you know? Uh, but don't say that it's not true, because it seems like it's true. They're even sorry about selling limited editions. Sorry! I mean, this sign, is this- I would have told you that this sign is meant to be funny, a joke, because it has the word sorry on it. But now I don't think it's a joke. I think that the uh, distributors of this, what is this stuff? Pop? Pop play? We're actually sorry. Uh, th and that's nice of them, you know? I don't, I don't mind it. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Why is that unique? Why is that different? Why is it bad to be mindful of other people's emotions? <laughs> it's kind of like how I say like, a eh, or like, hey. Like I'm always like, eh, it's pretty nice out here, eh? It's a very inclusive thing to say and that's why I, I say it. Otherwise it's just, it's nice today, dot, dot, dot. I think 
that's actually correct, that the world would be, on average, a much better place if more nations were like Canada and people had it in their mind to be mindful, apologetic, care about disrupting others, and, you know, being on the spectrum that is overly uh, concerned and apologetic and caring for their fellow man would be fantastic, but it's just Canada. That's why it's such a magical place, though. That's, it's a good thing. Unless, like, I don't want it to get weird, you know? I just want to be like, hey, yeah. Eh? Snowing, not an issue. <laughs> Nothing can stop people from learning. This guy is wearing shorts and a t-shirt in a snowstorm. And I will say I did that growing up. It would be like negative 40 degrees Celsius. And I'd be wearing like a little windbreaker and like shorts and walking what? to school. I don't know why I was so opposed to like wearing winter apparel. And that oh my gosh, Americans act like it's basically the apocalypse and uh, time to whip out everything that you own and put it on and walk to school. Do Canadians just develop some kind of special uh, second skin or hardened ability to regulate their temperature from being exposed to the cold for all their life? Is this a developed skill? I don't actually believe that that's possible, but uh, I don't know. It, it's hard to explain. She's saying that she uh, <laughs> didn't wear big poofy jackets like I do growing up. Was it uh, just to be cool and show that you can live through the cold? <laughs> or are Canadians just a little tougher? Maybe that's what it is. And then I went to Singapore where it's like hot year round and they were wearing like Canada goose jackets. And I was like, what? There's like a really funny picture in Vancouver where it snowed one day. It like doesn't snow in Vancouver very often where this guy's like screaming and running with an ice cream cone. I, I can't find that photo. And if you in the huh. comments can find it, please show okay. it to me. Canadians are well aware of their priorities. Whatever, just wash your hands. Anyone can come in, just wash your hands, okay? I like that, just wash them. While Canadian <laughs> policemen are always there, <laughs> Canadian policemen are always there to help you. They are really nice. Changing your tire for you, making sure oh. you get out okay. Wow. Oh, I don't think you would ever see that in the United States. Just because we'd be honestly worried about wasting their time or something. It, and. The other part is they just wouldn't <laughs> change your tire. It's just not something that would happen. It's not part of their job description, and we are very uh, big on that. Oh, really nice. Changing your tire for you, making sure you get out okay. Oh, there's a cop buying from a lemonade stand. Hmm. I feel like if this lemonade stand was in America, the cop would be like, do you have a permit? <laughs> and the cafe <laughs> just like, oh, yeah, huh. 25 huh. cents for sure. Actually, oh, geez. I'm sure somewhere, somewhere along the line that has happened where it had something to do with you can't sell, you can't legally sell lemonade or something without a business license. But I think, especially in the good old days in the United States, you'd see more police officers like pulling up, buying some lemonade. Police officers were just more part of the community and like respected as community members and public servants the further back you go and Times have changed, sadly. Although I heard kids now are like charging a dollar for their lemonade stands, and I think that that's a ripoff. Again, huh. you should move here. It's really good here. Nature in Canada is the best makeup artist. Indeed mm -hmm. it is. Whenever I would walk to school in high school in the winter, my hair would like often look like this, but only if you leave the house with wet hair. Sometimes I would cry <laughs> while walking to school because like the wind was so strong, it would make my eyes water, and then my tears would freeze onto my face. That was fun. While street- <laughs> I mean, it makes you look like some kind of a uh, frozen character or snow themed superhero, which is kind of fun. Wrong, it would make my eyes water and then my tears would freeze onto my face. That was fun. While street signs are Dino friendly, I've never seen this in my life. I reject this. I don't believe that this is a part of Canadian culture. I All right, I'm just I'm distracted do by her pronunciation of Dino. Do Canadians say Dino? Do you say dinosaurs? Because we say dinosaurs. Is it just her? Is that possibly just her uh, personal interpretation of that word? That would be okay, but it's really got me wondering now. I'm distracted from what, what even we were talking about here. Lee, I've never seen this in my life. I reject this. I don't believe that this is a part of Canadian culture. I am triggered. I'm offended. <laughs> I am reporting this to HR. Hailing Canada <laughs> can reach enormous sizes. It can. Does it not anywhere else? No one else has like golf ball hail? I will say it's like really rare, but like, it happens. There was a- Hail is so rare in the United States that I, when I've seen hail, it's like a lifelong memory. 
It's like, oh, what a magical day. Hail. And it's like hitting you in the face because you aren't used to the fact that it's pelting you with stuff. <laughs> You're like, oh, wait, this is like not that great. And uh, I've heard that hail can get huge, but certainly have never experienced anything close to a golf ball sized hail. That could dent your car or something, right? That's like scary. A hailstorm like an hour north of where I lived and like it, like the hails were like this big. Really? And they were like breaking people's windows and stuff and that was huh. really scary. Thankfully it skipped my town. What are they feeding their dog? That is a really big dog. <laughs> is that like a Doberman or what? <laughs> huh. Aw, I would rather have a like a big dog like this. <laughs> I need to stop calling him a dog. I'd rather have like a moose than a dog. Cause my dog is like too small. Winter. I didn't actually know there were moose without antlers. It makes it look like a different creature, to be honest. I wasn't sure what we were talking about here. <laughs> it's kind of waiting for her to say what it <laughs> was. <laughs> I need to stop calling him a dog. I'd rather have like a moose than a dog. Mm. My dog is like too small. Winters in Canada are harsh. I don't know why, I don't know. <laughs> just like plow it to the side. As a Canadian, I can't tell you what this guy's doing. Warning yeah. signs are loud. You can use your broom. You can fly on your broom, but you can't use your unicycle with train <laughs> wheels because okay. it's really slippery and you will fall and you will die. Mm. Stereotypes about Canada that many Americans believe. Canadians yeah. are polite. They are. And in fact, every time I'm in the United States and I'm like, thank you. And they're like, mm-hmm. I find that to be very rude. Very right. <laughs> I never even thought about it like that, man. Yeah. A lot of Americans just aren't it's not that we're trying to be impolite. I think it's that we're just not used to people being polite. So that when it happens, we don't even know what to think. <laughs> so it's just like, someone's very polite and like, I'm sorry. And you're just like, huh, mm, uh-huh, hmm. You know, just grunting. And then you sound even worse than if you said nothing. So it's really a self-fulfilling cycle. Very rude. Like, is it so hard to say you're welcome? Like, the mm-hmm. Like, it just seems <laughs> awful, but I don't judge. I'm Canadian. Canadians- And some Americans are genuinely rude and trying to be rude, but that's just another thing you get used to, unfortunately, in America. Is it so hard to say you're welcome? Like, the mm-hmm. Like, it just seems awful, but I don't judge. I'm Canadian. Canadians love maple syrup. We do. It's delicious. Why wouldn't you? Are you crazy? Are you out of your mind? You need to go to Tim Hortons and get a maple donut if you know what you're doing. Canadians are Tim Hortons, maple donut, the most Canadian things I've ever heard in my life are being spoken right now. Also, why are all these stereotypes true about uh, hockey and <laughs> maple syrup? What was the first one? Oh, that they're polite. Yeah, it's all true. Why is it all true? Maybe, maybe there's some truth to it. Crazy? Are you out of your mind? Of course. Duh. I mean, these are stereotypes where you are, but it hurts when a stereotype is true. Canadians live <laughs> in a land of ice and snow. It depends where you are, but typically, yes. Canadians <laughs> love Tim Hortons. This is like our donut shop, okay? And we love yeah. it. Canadians drink a lot of beer. We do. We do. Oh, I didn't actually really... I don't think that's a... American stereotype of Canada, to be honest. Unless we're thinking of hockey. Maybe. Maybe. But Americans drink a lot of beer. That's more of an American stereotype, to be uh, honest. Anyway. <laughs> we like it too. And every time I meet a guy and he doesn't like beer, I'm like, okay, that's <laughs> weird, but that's fine. We're not going <laughs> to date or anything, so it doesn't matter if you don't like beer. Canadians it's a warning. say, eh? <laughs> <laughs> it's a warning sign if they don't like beer. It's fine. We're not gonna date or anything, so it doesn't matter if you don't like beer. Canadians say A, we do. We're not constantly saying A. This guy's like trying to prove it wrong. He's like, A is used relatively in frequency in Canadian English. We do say A, but not like all the time. <laughs> I would say I say I think this, uh, this stereotype falls in a unique position in American culture because Americans think that Canadians saying A is a stereotype, an exaggeration. It's too silly, it can't be true. So it's almost like come full circle, <laughs> where, where Americans used to think Canadians said A, then we had all this weird cartoons and stuff with c the Canadian accent and them saying A. And now Americans think, oh, I don't think that's true actually, that's just an exaggeration. Whereas in fact, it was kind of true, a little bit true, so I don't know, it's kind of a middle ground, kind of a weird scenario. I say it like five times a day, so to me that's like a lot. Canadians say a boot, I say about. Most Canadians say a boat rather than a boot. I don't know, a boat that. I say about. It's like almost <laughs> like a silent T, it's like about. I don't yeah, this shattered my whole world when I first learned that Canadians don't say a boot, but I still think Canadians say sorry. 
but I may stand corrected on that. I need something to latch on to, you know? Something has to be true in my life about this. I don't know about that. That's what I say. Canadians make love in canoes. Haven't tried it, but I guess I will this summer. All Canadians <laughs> speak French. Uh, yeah, it's like mandatory, but I forgot because I haven't been in school for a while, but I took French until like grade 11. Canadians are taxed to death. You know, French is pretty widely, it's pretty widely known that there are French Canadians in the United States, and they certainly would in the United States have no concept of where or why people in Canada speak French. So, yeah, it's kind of true. Because uh, I haven't been in school for a while, but I took French until like grade 11. Canadians are taxed to death. I mean, kind of. It's kind of worth, though. All Canadians live in the wilderness. No. I live in Toronto and I don't live in the wilderness, but when I lived in Vancouver, I lived in a suburb called Burnaby for a while, and I lived like on a mountain. Yeah, I kind of forgot about this one. The stereotype that Americans think Canadians are very naturalistic, like in the wild, love camping, always outside, oh, we'll sort of look like lumberjacks even. <laughs> I forgot about that one. That is a that is an American thought about Canada, huh? I wish that one were more true. Maybe it is true. I, this one I haven't had a lot of clarity on. But when I lived in Vancouver, I lived in a suburb called Burnaby for a while, and I lived like on a mountain, so I did live in the wilderness. But in Alberta, <laughs> I didn't die. Actually, unless you consider prairies the wilderness, but I don't. Canadians are all about plaid, not anymore. Canada's big, okay? Everybody's like assuming that it's all the same all around, but it is big. -uh. Canada is- That is actually, I don't even know if she truly knows how big of an important point that is. Americans do think of Canada as all just this one place. Oh, that's Canada. It's Canada. They do that there. They all talk like that. They all have that. They all wear plaid. Whereas the reality is Canada is like incredibly diverse with tons of territories and provinces, each with their own individual cultures and identities that are very different. So that is not a concept that Americans on average understand at any level. So, a really interesting thing I've learned. It's free from gun violence. There's not as much. Canadian police get around on horseback. Some of them do, huh. and it's hilarious, and we don't want to put a stop to it. All Canadians <laughs> know one another. I hate <laughs> when I'm like, oh, I live in Canada, and a guy's like, oh, nice, do you know, like, Susie Carter? <laughs> No, it's pretty big up here. Big country. <laughs> Canada uses Monopoly money as its currency. Don't <laughs> tell anyone that. <laughs> Walk around. It does look like Monopoly money. Oh, it's actually pretty beautiful compared to the United States. It is way more beautiful than the United States money. But because our money is so boring and bland, we think of that as like, oh, that's like a cartoon. That's like a Monopoly game money. The guy's like, oh, nice, do you know, like, Canada uses Monopoly money as its currency. Don't tell anyone that. I walk around telling people that I'm rich so they can't find out that I use Monopoly money as currency. It's like currently working right now. It's like the biggest scam in history. Wait a second. You can only get Kinder Surprises in Canada? How did Kinder Surprises really? get banned in the States for kids choking on them? Like, are Canadian kids, like, smarter? <laughs> why are they still out here? And yeah, maybe. Why has nobody ever choked on one? If this is like a Canadian thing, then why does it have a different language? uber -ash. Even the little tiny toys in some of our Happy Meals in our McDonald's have gotten recalled and taken away because of... Apparently, it's a big choking hazard. I don't know. All I know is that whenever I got these as a kid, like, I used to just eat the chocolate and throw away the toy. When they made just the Kinder chocolate, I was like, yes. Yes. <laughs> In closing, Canadians have really nice treats and are nice to each other. Unfortunately, I'm not triggered at the stereotypes because they're true. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. If you'd ever like to see Oh, exactly. Some of the stereotypes are true. They're, they're nice stereotypes, at least. Uh, this was by Gloom. Uh... And I can see why you have 7 million subscribers, because that was really good. That was really funny. And I enjoyed that quite a bit, so I give it a like. <laughs> anyway, I really did enjoy that video. Uh, it's good to hear from a Canadian. A lot of little insights like this that you really would not, especially as an American, ever be able to truly get this kind of insight, even though a lot of it was funny and some of it wasn't true. A lot of it was really insightful and true. So <laughs> take that for what you will. I really did enjoy this. It was actually a pretty diverse set of subjects. I was thinking weird things that only exist in Canada. What could you possibly be talking about? Lo and behold, there's a lot of things that uh, exist in Canada that, that don't really exist anywhere else. Some things I knew of, some I really, some I really, really never did know of. 
But now I'm just wondering what exists here in the United States that I don't even realize. Anyway, I guess that's just a part of living life, if you will. Anyway, getting too philosophical <laughs> means it's time to wind it down, wrap it up. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like or leave a comment. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to Canada, Canadian culture, things and stuff there that I have never seen or heard before, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.